Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Maxim, and I'm a software engineer at a Galia company, and today I'm going to present you our project, which is called Chromium's Way to Welland. First of all, I'm going to talk about a Galia company. I will give some information about us. Then I will proceed with the goals and the motivations behind the project. I will give some background, uh, give the developments overview, what we have done, what we are doing now, what we're going to do next. And of course, I will do some demonstration. So Igalia is a private worker-owned company. We run a consultancy business in open source area. And we are based in Galicia, Spain, in a city called Carunia. It's in the northwest of Spain. And currently, we are 62 employees around the globe. Half of us work from Spain, and another half work remotely for, from other parts of the world. And the main areas that we work on are Chromium, Blink, WebKit, Server. We're also a member of W3C community, and we contribute to web standards. We do work on compilers, JavaScript engines like V8 and JavaScript core runtime, uh, language runtime. Also, we do multimedia stuff like GStreamer multimedia toolkit, kernel development, networking, uh, graphics like Meso drivers, accessibility, visualization, and cloud. And on the picture, uh, you can see our uh, web engines hackfest that we host every year, and this one was hosted uh, last year in October. So this map uh, shows how we are distributed. Some of us work from uh, Europe, Spain, Finland, Denmark, UK, also from USA, Brazil, Chile, and South Korea. So what's the goal behind the project? The goal is to be able to run Chromium natively on any Wayland-based system. So if there is a system which runs Wayland, there should be no limitations or impedances to run Chromium on it. And what motivated us to do that project is that Wayland is actually quite a major solution nowadays. And we think it has a better design in a sense of security better uh, des uh, design stack support, and what is more, it's a, well, nowadays, a good solution to the X windowing system. Also, there's a quite big demand from different uh, industries, like automotive or mobile and desktop. And to name a few, those are from the automotive side, for example, automotive grade Linux, Genevi, Volvo. Uh, <clears throat> from the mobile side, there are Finnish uh, company called Yola, Tizen, as well as QT Toolkit, GDK, and uh, on desktop side there are Ubuntu, Debian, which started to ship Wayland. As the background, so where the Wayland, Ozone Wayland project come from? So first of all, it was uh, done by Intel company, 01.org organization, and it used an Back at the time, Ozone project, which was uh, and is still uh, part of the Chromium project. And it's an abstraction layer underneath the OR toolkit to construct the accelerated surfaces. And the backends it supported were DRI, which became DRM, utilizing G the GBM for the Chrome OS operating system. So when I took this approach, uh, this project, and started to develop Wayland support of the trunk for Linux operating system. And to give you a minimalistic view how, it, how desktop integration looks looked like for the stock Chromium, I have a diagram here. So there is a browser process and renderer process which has some kind of JavaScript, HTML, stuff computation, and the sandbox GPU process. In the, inside the browser process, there is a so-called desktop integration, which has uh, toolkits and graphics platform related stuff like X11 bits and Windows. So they took that approach and added Ozone Wayland sibling inside the desktop integration. On the other side, there was a browser uh, GPU process which had a Wayland connection and everything was communicating using old IPC APIs. So we can treat this project quite successful because there was a good community adoption. Many companies took it to ship in their uh, project as well. 
but eventually it uh, came to the maintenance mode in December 2015. And back at the time, the Chromium version was uh, M49, and today is uh, M4, M66, which is 17 miles gap. So it means that uh, that lacks of some security, you know, uh, box fixings, all other uh, box fixings, and some of the functionality uh, losses. So in the meanwhile, the ozone layer became to something else, and it supported and it get new uh, backends like X11 and Wayland. But was the problem solved? No, it wasn't, because the original desktop integration, uh, which was taken, didn't comply uh, with the foreseen desktop integration in Google. So, as you remember, this is the approach that Intel took, but now there is another design called mass Linux integration uh, for desktop. So in the desktop integration, there is now our mass uh, platform independent integration, which communicates with a new service called a UI service using the Mojo APIs, which are the newer IPC APIs in the Chromium browser. Inside that, we can see the GPU service hosted by the UI service and the, U and the ozone layer is now underneath the UI service, and it has Wayland and X11 backends. And to say more, nowadays there's another uh, work happening in, in Chromium, uh, so-called visual service, which is about to have GL, heat testing, and compositing in a different process. And it will also host a GPU in another process as well, which will give additional 15% of performance. So Ozone project uh, evolved to the abstraction layer underneath the UI service instead. And it supported uh, back such backends as DRM, X11, and Wayland, but for the Chrome OS. For the Linux, we still needed to do something else to be able to run it just out of the box. So how we proceed with the project? So in uh, September 2016, we brought the Wayland backend to the tip of the trunk and started experimenting so that Ozone is not Chrome OS. Uh, on the picture you can see how it looked like. So at the bottom there is a Chrome OS specific widget which is not uh, acceptable for the Linux uh, uh, version of Chromium. We also added documentation for the Ozone and set up a build bot in the upstream. Then, in the cooperation with Google, we came up with two expressions. The first one inter was internal window mode, which is about uh, having Chromium for Chrome OS, which runs a window manager inside and the screen manager. And that window had only one accelerated widget, and then it was Aura, which uh, drawed different uh, windows inside that one accelerated widget. So user didn't in the interact with the host uh, operating system window uh, as itself. And then there is another external, uh, another expression called external window mode. It's the mode when there is no internal window manager and there are different uh, acceler accelerated widgets created for each new Chrome window, let it be uh, for example, tooltips, menus, and any other uh, Chromium widgets, Chromium windows. And now, user manipulates uh, the accelerated widgets uh, via the host operating system window to maximize them, minimize them, uh, resize, drag, or full screen. In internal window mode, is the internal window manager which does all this stuff. And of course, in external window mode, there is no uh, such a think as a screen manager. So to give you uh, an overview how it looked like in the beginning, here's a demo how it ran on the Renaissance M3 board back at the time in 2016. So as you can see, the bouncing balls demo is not smooth enough and it lacks so far performance. Here's also scrolling, which is not that smooth enough. And of course, 
the work still needed to be continued. We also forked the Meta Browser and implemented our uh, Meta Browser Recipe so that any Yocto-based system could be build the Chromium and use it there. So what we needed to do in order to bring external middle mode. So we needed to modify internal middle mode so, so that it created each, uh, for each new top level window an accelerated widget. And we also needed to extend the mass uh, so-called Mojo UI service and Ozone in order to support external middle mode. And we needed to ensure that there were no major functionality loses or performance loses compared to the stock Chromium. To start with, we begin with mass demo. So this is the demo which actually exercised exercise the, the UI service. So we needed to extend it in such a way so that it created different win windows with different uh, accelerated widgets and draw some content inside that. We also needed to rework our, uh, the internal window mode as uh, code assumptions. For example, in Chrome OS, there is one-to-one -one, one relationship of the display on the UI service side and the <coughs> display on the Aura side. For the external window mode, the display display on the Aura side actually represented a physical display, but the display on the uh, UI side represented uh, an actual window, Chromium window or uh, mini window or any other uh, window related to Chromium. So the relation became uh, from one to one to one to many. We also extended MOS and Ozone to support external window mode as I previously said. And what we needed to do there is to uh, properly handle, for example, bounds and route the events from the from Ozone to up, to up to the Aura. Also, we made it possible to run uh, Chromium with the existing dash dash mass flag so that UI service would came up. We also added XDJ version 6 support because before that it was only XDJ version 5 support. Keyboard events, uh, auto repeating, mouse cursor because before that it was the internal window manager which did the stuff. Also added to uh, support for the touch events. Uh, this patch was provided by uh, our friends from Calabra. We added uh, multiple window support. We started to use built-in window decorations instead of the host provided ones. Implemented window closing support because before that, that was the window manager, which internal window manager, which uh, actually did the stuff. We added menus, widgets, and tooltips support and allowed user to interact with the, uh, with the windows, like maximizing them, minimizing, restoring, uh, making them full screen, and so on. We also needed to change the ownership model of some objects, for example, representing the states of the windows on the uh, UI side, UI service side. We also implemented keyboard uh, like IME service integration. Uh, we did some slightly uh, custom window tree hierarchy so that re representations on, of the window on the Aura side would comply with the representation of the windows on the UI service side. We also needed to rework uh, the access policy so that the clients on the Aura side would access only the specific widgets or windows it is allowed to access. And of course we work on stability and hardness of our implementation and made the content shell to be run with mass on Linux. And what the status of the project today? I will give you and show you the video how it runs on Debian with GNOME shell on Wayland. Uh, so let's have a better quality. So as you can see, this is MAS with Ozone uh, platform uh, Wayland backend. And it's actually version 66, the most latest one by this day. It supports uh, many, uh, many tabs. Here's actually uh, HTML5 test, and we score uh, 526 points out of 
555, and all the features which are supported in the development uh, branch in the TUT are supported by our browser as well. And we score around 60 FPS in the WebGL demos. So everything is hardware and GPU accelerated. So you can see uh, uh, two windows working at the same time. And you can ask why I'm showing it to you because it's the same Chromium. Well, I, I want to say that it's actually the same Chromium, but it uses another design, and it uses uh, Wayland backend, which was impossible before that. Here is also another demo X with X11 backend, but I'm not going to present it here. The idea is that while we were working on extending UI service to be run on external window mode, we also added support to run both Wayland and X11 backends, which means that you do not need to get another Chromium binary for that one. You will just need <coughs> one binary, and using the Ozone platform flag, you will specify which uh, backend you are going to use. And if you remember, there was another video which I showed previously, how it uh, ran on the Renesas Aircar M3 board using the bouncing balls. So nowadays it's pretty smooth given that uh, nowadays uh, Renaissance M3 board runs only on two cores because other four cores are blocked and that's under development. So a few words about the project itself. The current, currently, the project is hosted on GitHub in the up, downstream repository. We have a well-defined contribution policy, like we do peer reviews on each commit. Also, we have an internal build bot uh, running our uh, existing tests. For example, the services unit tests, like some UI-related <coughs> tests, Ozone unit tests, browser tests, content browser tests and we have 98% of the pass rate. Also, we run content unit tests. And why we need internal build bot is that because we uh, want to ensure that when, when, whenever we implement new feature or do any changes, there are no regressions. We also have well-defined weekly uh, rebasing strategy, and we continuously clean our uh, GitHub uh, history. For example, when we implement a new feature and we need to have some kind of change for that one, we commit a new fix up. And whenever we do a rebasing, we squash all the all the fix up so that fix ups so the history keeps clean. And when we upstream patches to the upstream uh, repositories, we add do not carry forward flags so that Next week, when we do our basin, we do not add this commit, which might be might have been changed in the upstream while we were upstreaming it, because uh, Chromium community might have requested to change uh, the patch a bit. Also, we do periodic sync ups with Google so that we comply with their plans. If you are interested in more design and more deep, you can follow the documentation in the Google Docs. And this presentation is available on the FOSDOM uh, website so that you can follow from there. So what's left to do in this project? We still need to implement drag and drop support and we lack of uh, clipboard support between Chromium and host. For example, you can do copy pasting inside the Chromium window but not outside that one. Also, we still lack multi-screen support and we do not support non-English layouts. Also, we continuously ensure that there are no feature loses and a major performance penalties in if we compare to the stock Chromium. Also, we do integration inside Automotive Grid Linux. And this job is started and done by IoT, but whenever they request uh, our help, we provide it to them. Also, we plan to uh, release desktop installers in, in the sense of DIB or, or RPM packages. 
And one of the important uh, things is to continue upstreaming our projects to the tip of the trunk. Also, we are planning to enable more tests uh, in the upstream build bot uh, along with upstreaming. And as I previously said, we still need to decouple uh, mass from uh, visual service so that the GPU process will be run not as a thread inside the UI service but as a separate process. Thank you for your attention. The project is done by Galia and sponsored by Renesas. Whether you have any questions, you can contact me, Maxim, or my colleague Antonio from Igalia. <laughs>